previous video on Unit 1 Projects, I present the instructions for Triangle Calculator, the pennies, dollars, and change, and the temp conversions. In this video and in the next three, I'd like to give you my solution to each one of those. Sometimes there's value in seeing how another developer writes code and develops code. Uh, it's also in case you get stuck on these projects and you need a little extra hand-holding. I'm going to encourage you though first, before you watch this video and the two that follow it, to try to do these on your own. That's going to be the best way to learn. Then if you get stuck, come watch these videos. Or even once you have your project working, come watch these videos and compare your solution to my solution. Maybe you can learn something in the comparison. The way I'm going to present this is what we call a code review, which I will walk you through line by line of my solution. And oftentimes you might do this in the industry as you're working with part of a team. Here's just a quick review of the assignment instructions available through Canvas. But the alignment is we're going to work with variables, we're going to get user input, and we're going to display formatted output. That's really the focus of that, as well as the process of getting from that input to that output. The assignment itself is to write a Python 3 program to calculate the length of the hypotenuse, side C, of a right triangle, given the lengths of the other two sides, A and B, as provided by the user. The program will also calculate the area of the triangle and the perimeter, the sum of the three sides. So there's some other specifications here. The key one is um, all output should be displayed in two decimal places. And we want to use uh, decimal values then for our calculations. So we should use float rather than integers. And I specify here, convert the string input to float data types. Input from the user is always going to be a string type. We can't do mathematical calculations on strings, so we need to convert it to a numeric data type. And our two popular ones are float and int. We're going to use float. Int would eliminate any decimals. I do give you some screenshots of what this should look like. So we're going to present the user um, telling them what this program does, ask them to enter side A and B, and then we're going to show them the output. Let me do a quick review of the IPO diagram. In the instructions, I provide you the input process and output diagram or IPO diagram. You recall that programming really is largely figuring out what's the input, what's the user going to enter. Maybe the input's coming from a text file or a database. What's the output that we want to get? In this case, we want the hypotenuse, the area, and the perimeter of a triangle given sides A and B. And then what's the process for getting there? What are the calculations we need to do in this case to take that side A and side B and get the hypotenuse, area, and perimeter. So let me jump over to Python. Here is my code solution to the Triangle Calculator project. And as you can see, it's pretty short. The first few lines here simply print out what the program does and basically who it was developed by. And that's a good habit to get into. You always want to tell your user what the program does and give them perhaps some instructions. As I mentioned, coding is largely input, process, and output. And so I did some comments here, of course, with the hashtag or pound sign preceding that comment. So it's ignored by the editor. So first we have our input. We need to get the length of side A from the user. And we use the input statement to do that, specifying in the parentheses the prompt that we want to have. That will allow them to enter a, a value. It's going to be a string value. But because we want to do mathematical calculations on it, we need to convert it to a numeric format, which in this case is going to be a float. So our process here is float, and in the parentheses, what we want to convert, what we want to convert is the string that they enter in this input. So for every left paren, you must have a right paren. Then we're going to do the same thing for side B. Our process then is to calculate the length of side C using the Pythagorean theorem. C squared equals A squared plus B squared, or C equals the square root of A squared plus B squared. So we're going to take that side A variable that the input is going into for side A, and we're going to square that. We can do that uh, exponentiation with two asterisks. So side A squared. If I wanted to cube it, that would be a 3. We're going to add to that side B squared. And then we're going to take the square root of that. And the square root is the same as doing an exponentiation to 1 half. So notice this is all in parentheses. That value is going to be calculated first. And then we're going to take the square root of that value. And then we're going to find the area. So I have a variable named area. It's going to equal side A times side B 
times one half, 0 0.5. The perimeter is going to be the addition of the three sides. So the variable perimeter equals side A plus side B plus side C. That is my process. I'm finding the three values that we were asked to provide. Now comes the output. We use print statements. So I'm going to print the length of the hypotenuse is, and I'm going to do an end in this case of just a space rather than a carriage return. So I'm overriding that default carriage return or the backslash n and just simply say, putting a space. That way the next thing printed remains on the same line. And the next thing printed is going to be side C and I want to format that. So I'm using the format command for two decimal places. And I have a literal string here in quotes, in single quotes, 0.2f. F means it's a floating point. I want two decimals. And this is going to round the value of side C to two decimals and then print that. I didn't specify a different ending here, so it's going to give me a carriage return. So the next line is going to say the area is, and here I combine the two together. So we can use the concatenation operator and we're going to format area also with two decimal places, 0.2f. And the last line is the perimeter is, concatenate perimeter formatted to two decimal places. We'll look at some other ways of putting strings together uh, down the road, but this is just a simple concatenation of putting two strings together, one of which is being calculated with the format command using the value of a variable. Let's watch this run. So when it runs, I simply get all this that print statements up here at the top saying who it was developed by, maybe the title, what the program does, enter the length of side A. So we can enter commonly uh, to test things or test the, the Pythagorean theorem. Um, three and four on sides A should give us a side C of five. So I'm going to use some integers here, three and four told the length of the hypotenuse is 5.00. Remember, it's being formatted two decimals. The area is 6.00, and the perimeter is 12.00. We'll let's see if it accepts some decimal values here for my input and make sure that that works. You always want to test your application multiple times with different scenarios and make sure it does exactly what it's supposed to do. So we said we should be able to input float values. Let's test that. I'm going to run the module again. And so this time, I'm just going to change these just slightly. So I'm going to do 3.5 and 4.25. And so the length is going to be a little bit larger, 5.51. The area is 7.44. And the perimeter is 13.26. And I can add those three uh, sides together and see that indeed it, it is 13.26. Seems like my program is working fine. I probably want to test this a few more times with some known with some known values. Here's some additional test data you can use to make sure that your program is working correctly. If you just jumped into this video and haven't seen the prior videos to this, I invite you to check out my Python playlist of videos. And if you'd like to be alerted to future videos that I create, you can click my picture up in the top right and subscribe to the channel.